So, Andre. I don't have one. of giant, hairless, and pale-skinned mutants to reach the monster who is sitting quietly on the floor. Mentor? Yes, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> How's the shoulder? Actually, almost better. Thank you. Where was your consciousness? The Grim. They have something very big in store, but they have been stalled. Installed by what? Me. You. How? My other half. There's another you? Yes. And we are getting closer and closer. The closer we are, the stronger I become. Can the two of you be joined? Oh, yes. He just has to see. See what? Something deep inside himself. Something he's been hiding from. What is he hiding from? You know what? I'll show you. <coughs> Take my hand. Are you going to kill me again? <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Very well. <clears throat> Marcus takes the monster's hand. His vision fades and everything suddenly goes black. Marcus is surrounded by a void. Mentor? Mentor! Hello, Marcus. Where am I? You are within the depths of your own mind. <laughs> what am I supposed to see? You must travel into the clandestine part of your mind and face your worst fears to find the answers that you seek. But everything is dark and there's nothing here. This is your mind, remember? <laughs> <laughs> you see, only what you want to see. Seek, and ye shall find. Marcus searches through the darkness and suddenly finds a large safe door. Is this where my so-called fears are kept? If you want it to be. Marcus is instantly surrounded by an armored suit. What is this that I am now wearing? A defense mechanism. Astonishing, isn't it? <laughs> Will these fears hurt me? No. Well, then I don't need armor. As Marcus speaks, the armor grows bigger and tougher. Wait, what is this? It's called intellectualization. <laughs> I have read of that. It is the human way of isolating the logical from the emotional in order to handle difficult situations. Yes, Marcus. That is what the armor represents. And by the looks of it, you have been doing it for some time now. But I am not human. Mayhaps humans turn to logic and reason as a last resort to protect themselves from their tumultuous emotions. But to me, logic and reason is, a, is modus operandum. The armor grows spike-like protrusions on it. Settle down, Marcus, <clears throat> and go into the safe before your armor becomes any more cumbersome. Marcus approaches the safe and tries to pry it open. It won't open. Do not let your feelings ride rob you of your intelligence. I already told you, I... Oh, I see. A safe has a lock. Marcus walks to the center of the lock and turns it. 
The enormous safe door opens slowly and Marcus approaches the entrance of the safe. On the ground, he finds his aunt dead. He pauses at the doorway, staring at his aunt's body. Go on, Marcus. There are far more frightening things to see. Marcus's body tingles with fear, but he looks away and walks over his aunt's body. The body suddenly grabs him and shouts tumultuously, I should have left you at the hospital! You came into my house and destroyed my life! <laughs> Marcus screams and his armor grows bigger. Marcus crushes the body's head with his armored fist. He flicks some of the blood off of his armored hand, turns around and walks further into the safe. As he walks through the corridor of the safe, Marcus sees several jail cells. In each one is a different version of himself. Some are angry for different reasons and some sad for different reasons. He approaches one of the cages where he sees himself crying. Pray, tell what vexes you. <laughs> I, I'll never find someone to love. Logical. You don't need someone to love. Yes, I do! Please, I'm dying. Let people in. You are not frightening, you are confusing. Marcus's armor becomes more dense. The depressed apparition of Marcus says, Do you ever wonder why you feel like you don't belong here? One, do you ever wonder why you're alive? Yes. It's because you don't let anyone in. You're all alone in here and you're dying on the inside. That is ridiculous and illogical. I have friends, but how many do you love? I do not love. Yes, yes, yes you do, or you did, and you just can't admit it. You are a pathetic, disgusting disgrace to life in this universe. You should never talk about yourself like that. Look at what your mother has done to us. The two stare at one another. Before your armor becomes so thick that you can't even hear me, I beg you, do me one favor. What is that? Tell Melissa that you love her. I've heard enough. The desperate and sad creature in the cage screams to Marcus as he walks away. Tell her! Tell her! Tell her before it's too late! Marcus walks further down the hall and he finds a door. What is behind that door? What men spend their entire life avoiding. The inner unknown. Well, I am not afraid. Marcus opens the door and finds darkness. Focus, and you will see. Marcus focuses, and the more he focuses, the more afraid he becomes of this room until an amorphous black thing with big yellow snake eyes appears. Marcus screams and shuts his eyes. What is that? It is the essence of the fear itself. A very powerful tool. I want to leave now. No, Marcus. You have the opportunity to do what no man has done before. What? Uh, do what? You can control, you can learn to make your fear work for you. Remember everything that you learned so far and find a state of mind that is unlike a wall or a fog. When you have found a state of mind where you are uncomfortable but ready, enter the room. Encouraged by the monster's words, Marcus sticks his arm into the darkness. The darkness begins to pull him in. Marcus screams. Oh, what is happening? You're not quite ready. <laughs> All right, wait, what do I do? Find the state of mind, uncomfortable but ready. Marcus's armor grows heavier and he pulls away from the darkness. His mm. armor is so large that Marcus falls to the floor. Did I do it? No. You used your armor to spring you loose. Why is that a problem? Because the armor gets its power from ignorance, and you want to learn. Well, then how do I do it? Uncomfortable states store energy. You must be somewhat uncomfortable to make the changes necessary, and you must have the focus to do so. Try it again. Marcus waits at the doorway, staring into the eyes of the darkness. I am uncomfortable enough, but not focused. Take some time, but whatever you do, do not think too much. That will prevent you from making that dark and scary thing work for you. Why? It just 
does. <laughs> now focus. Marcus continues to stand in front of the doorway with fear itself staring him in the face. I suppose I'll try again. Are you ready? As much as I ever will be. Marcus walks cautiously toward the strange eyes, straight into the darkness. He enters the room and the door closes behind him. Marcus says to the large set of eyes, What is it that men cower from? The eyes glare at Marcus and a loud roar is emitted from the room. Marcus, quivering in his armor, says, I am not afraid. At that moment, the fear in him increases. Marcus's skin tingles and his eyes water. He begins to feel as if he were falling and falls to the floor of the room. Why do I have such fear? This is so illogical. How am, I, how am I to make this work for me? Marcus sits in the room alone in fear, trying to concentrate. <clears throat> Why am I afraid from Melissa? She is safe. <sighs> Damn this illogical human body. I should not have a fear of such trivial things. Marcus's armor grows bigger, and he is ejected from the room. It looks like you did well. Marcus. Oh, does it? For a time. <clears throat> well, I still can't stop shaking. The monster appears before him. That shows that we should come here more often to learn. Yeah, I think I've learned enough. This is human madness. I would like to leave now. You must train this human madness to become manageable, or else that armor of yours will become so cumbersome that you will not be able to move. Uh, this armor only exists in my mind. I speak metaphorically. <laughs> yeah, you still think that I intellectualize as a defense mechanism. I know you do, and I now know why. Excuse me? You try to protect yourself from the fact that your father was taken from you in violence, and that your mother loves her drugs more than you. <laughs> How old were you when he died? I was six. Marcus's armor grows again. Your mind seems to recognize that you are vulnerable. If you don't recognize your pain, you will never, never heal, and your weakness will eventually be exploited. I don't suppose you have proof of that. I've seen it happen before.